Notion seems to be the only software that can transform you from an unproductive mess to a productivity god. All influencers and productivity gurus are raving about it. And it's completely supercharged my productivity organization. One tool at the center of it all. Notion. Notion is basically my second brain. And to be honest, I've never seen a piece of software gather this kind of following, which almost looks like a cult. And so how did this happen? I looked under the curtain and now it all makes sense. Because once you understand the psychology behind Notion's design and their genius strategy, you'll see why a glorified note-taking app is now valued at $10 billion. When Notion started in 2015, they took every single book about how to build a startup, put them into a pile and light them on fire. Because Notion is a note-taking app, a to-do list, a CRM to save your customers info, a project management tool, a collaboration space, and it's simply not great at any of those things. You see, one of the first rules when building a digital startup, unless you have billions to spend, is to conquer one specific niche and expand it from there. Imagine if Facebook wanted to launch a social media site with a marketplace for used items, dating site and gaming all together in 2005. Usually wanting to create something that appeals to everyone is a recipe for disaster, but for the Notion founders, it worked out great. Their goal was to create something that replaced Microsoft Word, Evernote, Todoist and Asana. And what usually happens is that you try and adding more and more feature until you create something that ends up being incredibly complex. So in 2015, Ivan and Simon, the Notion co-founders, locked themselves in a room in Kyoto, Japan. And they started to work 18 hours a day on Figma to design their app. And what they did was taking the existing apps and distilling the few key things that were absolutely needed and scrapping everything else. Building a Microsoft Word replacement? Let's remove all those A4 pages. People don't print anymore. Want more fonts? Nope. Want to choose colors? You only get 10. And by doing this, they distilled a solution that was simple enough. And that's how they launched Notion 1.0. Now, okay, okay, they launched this app, it replaced many things into one, but it still doesn't explain how so many people are obsessed with it. I mean, there's Notion ambassadors and people spontaneously organizing dozens of real life meetups about their note-taking app. Just why? Well, this is because Notion is based on three key psychological principles. And the most important one is called the IKEA effect. When you buy something at IKEA and you assemble it, you put your blood, sweat and tears into putting together that Meltorp, Meltorp, Meltorp table or that Lommarp bookcase. Lommarp, Lommarp. And it's been studied that people attribute a disproportionately higher value to things that they built themselves. And this is exactly what happens with Notion. You spend hours building your perfect template, the ultra-optimized database to track your to-dos, your notes, every aspect of your life, and since you built it with your own hands, you attribute an exponentially higher value to it. Because if you take a normal to-do app, yeah, you can launch it, you can start using it, it has some cool features, but it's not something that is truly yours. If you grew up playing Lego, just as I did, you know that the peak moment is building the thing, assembling that Millennium Falcon or that castle. And after it's done and it's time to play with it, all you want to do is tweak it, add to it, modify it, change it. The paradox of Notion is that you end up spending more time tweaking the system that makes you productive than actually being productive. And this actually makes you unproductive? And to me, this is not a bad thing. They design a piece of software so flexible and fun to use that spending time building your perfect system brings you a sense of fulfillment. And this brings us to the second psychological principle that makes people obsessed with Notion, which is Maslow's hammer. It's a cognitive bias made famous by Abraham Maslow in 1966. And the key idea is that once you have a tool that you are familiar with, you want to use it for everything. Give a man a hammer and everything becomes a nail. Or in our case, give a man Notion and will try to use it for everything. And this innate human behavior, first documented in the 1800s, is why people are getting triggered to solve every aspect of their lives with a Notion database. Even if it's not the best tool for the job. For me, for example, it took some months to realize that Notion sucks for my to-dos, so I switched to a dedicated app like TickTick and never looked back. But the insane part that contributing to Notion reaching a $10 billion valuation is the meta game. Meta. No, 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 the, the meta game. A meta game is defined as the game about the game. So let me explain. If, say, Pokemon is the game, the meta game is all the infrastructures around it, like YouTube channels about Pokemon, dedicated shops, tutorials, strategies, hacks, events, everything that goes around the game itself and influences it. And Notion is one of the few startups that was able to build a killer meta game. 
thanks to the psychological principles that make it so fun to create with it. There are now tens of thousands of YouTube videos about the best Notion setups, thousands of people selling templates online, entire companies that are built around Notion. And all of this is part of this huge Notion metagame. And yes, this also means that all these people and companies are basically doing free marketing for Notion. And the way they make money is also following this principle. You see, Notion is used by small startups, just like the one I'm working at, and big companies alike. And the sneaky way they are using to get into these companies and have them pay for the software is called product-led growth. Instead of hiring an army of salespeople to contact companies and try to pitch their software, Notion wants people to use starting the software for free for themselves. And when these same people found a startup or join one, they would want to use the same app that they use to manage their daily lives, not some random software that a salesperson pitched them. So basically their strategy is taking unproductive people, making them so f***ing productive that they end up founding 10 startups, and then sell Notion to all those 10 startups. If you learned something cool from this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, because that's what makes these videos possible. And here is another one that you might enjoy.